I mean, it's just, yeah, you go from Celtics and the obviously Danny H part of it wasn't uh, crazy, but uh, the Brad Stevens going to the front office was, was pretty nuts. And then as that's happening, uh, I'm, I'm working the, the coach K story uh, and trying to figure out what's going on there. And I texted you about what, an hour ago, some, something yep. like that. Um, yep. And uh, yeah, I mean, listen, is it a surprise? He's 74 years old. So it's not a shock, obviously, that, that Coach K is stepping down. I think the bigger surprise, Rob, is that he's not doing it like Roy Williams did it, right? Roy just did it kind of abruptly. Coach K's got a little bit of a plan here and, and saying, hey, in a year, I'm going to step down and I'm going to help with the transition and help John Shire, who is likely going to be the head coach, as long as it's rubber stamped, which it's supposed to be at about 3.30 this afternoon. I'm going to help John Shire make that kind of transition, and, and then I'm going to step away. And one of the big reasons why Coach K, other than his age, is deciding is the same reasons that Roy Williams is going and the same reasons that Jim Beheim's probably going to go soon is name, image, likeness, the transfer portal, all the stuff that is changing college basketball right now, I, I think it's said to these guys who are getting older anyway, you know what? And the pandemic, I'm sure the pandemic was part of it too. They got to kind of stay home. And remember, Coach K was very, very cautious with the mm -hmm. pandemic. He was like the last head coach to come in um, with his team last August. Didn't bring in the kids till like August 8th or 9th, somewhere around there. So I, I think, again, this is something that a lot of people thought might happen. But it's almost like a Gene Cady, Matt Painter type plan here. Yeah, and, and you know one of the things that you kept hearing um, about this during the, uh, the during the pandemic and during the season is that um, this is it's just something that kind of wore on him, right? Like when you when you go through a situation like this, when you go through something that that the entire world went through when it comes to, to the, the COVID nineteen era, uh, you kind of realize that there are things that are more important than maybe just doing your job, or the things that are more important than um, continuing to coach basketball at seventy five. I think you kind of get to a point where you say. All right, look, I've made enough money. I've built my legacy. Everyone's going to know who I am. I've got this program in a place where uh, the person that's going to be taken over is going to be able to have some success. Like, why don't I just go and enjoy the rest of my life in a stress-free environment where I can sit on a beach and I can play golf and and I can do whatever I need to do um, to kind of uh, to relax and not have to worry about the stress of being a college basketball coach. So, um, I, I, it's not to me. It's not all that surprising that this uh, that this happened and. Um, I mean, it was it was something that was kind of rumored and bandied about for a while. So, uh, Jeffrey, we, we got a special guest coming in here right now. Oh, right boy. <laughs> oh, a dookie through and through here. Oh, what's up? What's up? Are you are you going to cry on this pot, Andre Dawkins? No. You're not? No tears? No. You promise? No, no tears. I promise. All right. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's kind of like, I don't know, for, for you who played with John Shire, this is kind of – Bittersweet for you, right? Like Coach K, he was gonna go at some point soon, anyway. I yeah, we yeah, I was, yeah, I was just texting um, with a friend about that. It's like you, you knew it wasn't, you know, it wasn't gonna go on forever, but you know, it's still shocking, uh, you know, to hear the news. So um, it is sad, but yeah, like you said, um, you know, if it if it <clears throat> if it's confirmed that it's John, then yeah, that's that's. It's That's amazing. Likely, very, very likely. You know, yeah. I think it's more of a formality than anything. At three thirty, they're having a uh, a meeting with probably um, you know the higher ups at Duke, mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of probably rubber stamp it. But you can bet, like, if K wants it, who's standing in the way? Yeah, nobody. Yeah, not some uh, new AD. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a big, big time like regime change at Duke. Uh -huh. You got uh, Doctor White retiring. You got Coach retiring. Um, I'm sure. Coach Cut doesn't have a, a ton of years left, so um, a lot of changes coming. Yeah, Dre, I, I'm curious. You you know John well. You played with him. Um, you've been in locker rooms with him. Uh, what? How do you? How how does he fit as the head coach at a program um, that is as uh, as big as as big of a brand as Duke is? You know, I I know him a little bit. I don't know him as well as you. And and he's one of these guys that just seems like he's. Uh, I don't. I, I've never heard anyone say a bad thing about John Shire. We talked about this. Other than Maryland fans, I think they're the only people on the <laughs> planet that don't like John. So, how do you think he fits uh, running a program and running a brand as big as Duke basketball is? 
Well, you must not have listened to the Gerald Henderson pod because he had a lot of <laughs> bad things to say about you. No, um, yeah, John's John's awesome, man. Um, you know, only got to spend the one year with him, um, but you know, those guys, those seniors, were on a mission that year, and um, you know, couldn't have asked for better seniors to 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 have my freshman year, and um, it was kind of crazy because he. Um, you know, I, I had a fifth year there and that was his first year back um, mm-hmm. on the coaching staff. And, you know, that first year, I feel like, you know, he was trying to figure out what he was doing. Um, you know, he's fresh off of playing professional basketball and, um, you know, he's trying to find his voice and then, you know, getting a chance to see him and talk to him and go back and, <clears throat> you know, hang out with the the teams over the last couple of years. Um you can really see that he's, you know, he's found this voice. He knows, um, you know, who he is as a coach now. So uh, I'm excited for him. Um, I'm, you know, be honest with you, it's not the easiest. It's not, you know, the first guy after K is not, it's not the easiest job in the world. Um, but I'm excited for what John um, will bring, you know, to our program uh, moving forward. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's honestly a lot about, uh, the staff around him, and you know, I think he. They're gonna have bring, to give him a veteran draft. Yeah, he needs to bring in a veteran who's yeah. been head coach before. Yeah, he definitely needs someone. Is who's, it who's running program? Isn't Wojo the easy choice? He's unemployed. His K's like second son, or maybe not second, but um, you know, <laughs> ultimately, isn't Wojo the easy choice there to help John Shire? Uh. He's definitely a guy I would reach out to, um, for sure. It's just, I don't, I don't know. It's, you know, it's tough to go from, uh, you know, running your own program to being an assistant uh, at a program, especially like at your program that you, you know, you were the assistant at for so long. So I don't know. I don't know what Wojo's, I, you know, I haven't spoken to Wojo. I don't know what his mindset is like, but he's definitely a guy I would reach out to for sure.